there's a way to make an entrance. My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Welcome to Room Service. I'm Sarah Richardson. Do you want to know how to make a great entrance? We open the door to contemporary design solutions for a vestibule and adjoining powder room. With insider knowledge on the latest in Broadloom, the right accents to unify the space with the rest of the home, and a solution to keep a high traffic area neat and tidy. We'll show you how to make your entrance hall extend a warm welcome, and it's only on room service. door, enter the hallway, and what you see affects your impression of the entire home. In this case, I'm standing in a center hall plan Georgian, and the hallway literally links all of the rooms together. There's nothing wrong with these rooms as they stand. They're done in a nice, traditional, neutral color palette. However, the family that we're doing this haul for likes more contemporary design and loves punchy color. So we definitely need to make things a little bit more exciting and a little bit more vibrant in here. We're gonna start with the vestibule. We need to replace the existing marble floor with something that has a bit more intricate patterns and shapes. So that would add definite impact and interest the second you walk in the door. A light fixture is definitely in need both in the vestibule and in the hallway. The lighting in the front hall is a little dated and I would like something a little more dramatic because it's the area that everyone sees as they walk in through the front door. I think we should remove the traditional wallpaper and think about using another, I'd still like to use wallpaper because it would be a very good effect here with the paneling, but think about using something that has more texture and has a more contemporary feel, maybe a wide stripe. It's important to keep in mind the style of the entire house because you want it all to link back together. It would be very nice if we picked up a bit more of the color from our living room, which is more in the golds and reds, and uh, a bit more also in the neutrals, like the tans and the beiges, which we don't really have much right now in the front hall. Onto the stairs here, we've got carpet that's been installed for quite some time, again, in a neutral tone. I think we want to keep the neutral, however, it may be time just to update that. Now, what about the powder room, you ask? Well, right now, it has a Mexican tile on it, blue wallpaper. It's something that was definitely added in after the fact, not original to the house, and it has a really low ceiling. I think the only thing to do here is go for big impact. This is where I definitely want to use a bold hit of color. We're going to experiment with having a lot of fun with color. It's going to be all about texture and light and fabrics and wallpaper and this is going to be a dynamic and wow front entrance. When you think of home, think of what makes it comforting and inviting. Think of the colors that create a welcoming environment. Tones of honey as rich as liquid gold create a mood of warmth and energy. Look to the fields and the treats of summer to incorporate a sense of vitality and fun with bold color. Raspberries offer an incomparable zest to our scheme. Finish it off with a sleek, sophisticated accent of drama. A welcome addition to any neutral palette and guaranteed to make a lasting first impression. Are, you probably have Broadloom in at least one room in your house. Most of us do, but nobody really wants to talk about it because there is nothing glamorous about carpet. But Gary, I need to know the answers so that we can make informed decisions. Okay. okay. So tell me, what are the different fibers that Broadloom is going to be made of that we're going to find? You're going to find three basic fibers. You'll either find wool, polyester, or polyolefin, or you'll find nylon. Okay, so right now, wool is the sort of most stylish thing. Everybody wants wool. Oh, we've got this lovely arrangement here. Something in, often it's textured um, to look like sisal. 
Yeah. And sometimes it's blended with? Wool can be blended with nylon, wool can be blended with polyolefin, uh, wool can be 100% pure. It can be whatever it wants to look like okay. in terms of a cut pile or in terms of a loop, depending on the style. Okay, whoa, whoa, you're gonna lose me there. What's the difference between what's cut pile and what's loop? Okay, well, if we refer back to what's spread out on your lap, we okay. have a cut pile product here, which is the traditional style of uh, broad loom that everybody's familiar with. This is cut pile. Yes. And then what's loop? A loop is basically not a cut pile. Okay. So it's it's a loop product and you can look in all sorts of different textures, styles. Okay. I'm getting rid of the cut pile because there's just no way I'm using it. This is like memories of days gone by. And then we can have something that has a loop. This yes. is soft. And this is really designed to look like a wool, correct? This is designed to feel and look like a wool. It's okay. a nylon product. It feels a lot like wool. It's very soft and luxurious for a lot less money. Okay. If you want to have the real McCoy, you can certainly then look at wool. Um, and being aware of uh, there's many different qualities of wool available. There's many different qualities of nylon available. So it really okay. depends on what it is you're looking for. Now what's twist? Twist refers to uh, in one inch of fiber how many times it's been twisted. So the higher the twist, the more memory that fiber will have, so the chances are it will go back into position. So it won't show your footprints and retain the footprints. Or for example, if you move a coffee table and you have that little square where the leg was, it'll come back faster with a higher twist. Now I know we said that there was nothing glamorous about carpet, but you gotta tell me what's hot and new in, in Broadloom. We're seeing a lot more products uh, with highly intricate patterns, a lot more pattern and a little more scale. Uh, instead of the small little textures that we've traditionally seen, we're seeing the scale expand and explore it a bit more. Um, one of the things that that does for us, of course, in terms of a consumer, is that the higher the pattern, the more soil hiding and stain resistant that it'll be because it's not solid. You're not gonna notice your soil and stain as much. Because so a good there is candidate for stairs and for family rooms Absolutely. and stuff like that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Gary, thank you so much. I, I, I feel that I have a much better understanding of carpet, and now I just have to commit all of this to memory forever. Thank Good you. luck. Thanks. Coming up on Room Service, from top to bottom, our entryway makes some great progress and beautiful woven art, pleasing to the eyes and feet. We've made a few dramatic changes in this space so far. First and foremost is the floors. I have to show you, in both the vestibule and in the powder room, we've tiled. And because they're small spaces, I wanted to do something that would add a little bit of interest. So I've done a sort of mosaic carpet in both rooms. In the vestibule, I've got two bands of four by four tumbled marble, followed by a two by two tumbled, a half by half tumbled, and then the four by four again in the center on the 45. This allows us to sort of define the perimeter of the room and then create a little bit of texture and interest on the center. We did the same sort of treatment in the powder room with a band running all around in the four by four, then the half by half, and then we set the tiles in the center in a sort of brick pattern. So each pattern is a little bit different than each other, but complementary at the same time. As you can see, we've also taken down all the old wallpaper. And of course, I am not very patient and I wanted to see how the wallpaper was gonna look. So I've had a test strip put up just to make sure that we like the way the color is. It's picking up all the colors from the living room. It's adding some real impact and giving it a bit more of a modern touch. So that has been a real success story so far. Any minute now, the carpet installers are gonna come and they are going to rip out the existing broad loom and install the new carpet that we've chosen for these stairs thanks to some expert advice that I got. You'll also notice I'm standing beneath a really lovely fixture here that we've installed in the hall. I found two different fixtures. This one is a chandelier with a sort of grape crystal on it in an amethyst color and we've also picked up that same color on the fixture that I've installed in the vestibule. Each fixture is distinct. I actually found them in two completely different shops, but they work so well together as a pair and create softness as well as a sense of elegance in this hall. So as you can see, we are steaming ahead to make this a classic yet elegant space.
When it comes to stair runners and area rugs, there is no rule that says that you have to settle for standard run-of-the-mill binding. Instead, you can think about incorporating a more decorative element, such as lip cord. Now, I've got a collection of different cords here. They come in jute and cotton and chenille and even blends. They're available in a wide variety of colors and they're normally used for upholstery or for decorative accessories like pillows. It's sold by the yard at specialty fabric stores and you can have your installer either glue or seam the cord onto the edge of the car Carpet. This will make your carpet runner have a sophisticated touch that is anything but ho-hum. This is an incredible space. It's like actually being in an art gallery. I'm surrounded by a collection of beautiful and individual colorful Tibetan carpets. Each one is hand knotted in Nepal and they're available in every size from a four by six right through a 10 by 14. So sky's the limit in terms of size and design and color. Whether you're looking for something very contemporary to go in a stark and modern space or something more transitional that could work complementing both antique and contemporary furniture. There's a great variety to choose from. But instead of looking on the big scale, I'm gonna zero in and look at the size that I need to go in our front hallway. We're looking at something in about a four by six size, so I'm just gonna take a look here and see what I can find. Here's one that is not ideal for our space, but would work extremely well with a monochromatic color palette. I love this bold design. You can see that there's a real softness to the wool. Apparently the Himalayan sheep have more oil and lanolin in their wool, which creates a much softer and more resilient carpet. Therefore, it's an ideal choice for our front hallway for lots of traffic running through. This garnet and sort of ochre, strong mustard striped one would probably go quite well in the space. What I think I'll do is take a few to try out and see which one works best. So this one could be a candidate. I'm concerned it might be a little bit bright. This has uh, the sort of olive color that we don't see too much on the ground floor, but appears in the drapery uh, and some other accents on the second floor. So this could be a good tie-in. It also has this sort of soft, rusty red that we see in the living room. And of course, our ochre color from the wallpaper and the tile pattern that we've put both in the powder room and in the vestibule. I think this is a good candidate. I'm not sure how the geometric design may work with what we've got. Here's another one. Oh, this has got a little bit of purple in it. So this could actually pick up that amethyst color that we have in our chandelier. Three so far. One of the things that I would recommend that you do if you're thinking about looking for a carpet is to choose a variety. Instead of hauling one all the way home and finding that it's not the right thing, why not amass a collection, take three or four home and try them out in the space. And that way you can see how the different colors in the different carpets that you choose bring out different elements in your rooms and in the home entirely. Mm, they're so rich. That's a little too bold for me. Oh, I like this one. Again, this is sort of like that first one with the stripes, except we've got a bit of a, a looped ochre square here, plus a border detail. So how many is that now? I'm at about four now. Just have a big rug gallery. Love this. This is beautiful. I don't think this blue is gonna complement our rim, so we'll pass on that one. And, nope, there we go. So I've got four to try. I'll take them back to the house, I'll set them in the space, and you'll just have to see which one we choose in the end. Next on Room Service, we hammer away the solution to keep the entrance organized. Our entry hall is really coming along, but there's still a couple of places for improvement. What I've noticed is that there's a small radiator in the vestibule, and it would be an ideal place to have a shelf, a place to put down keys, sort the mail, and even to be able to hang up little kids' coats. So here's what I'm thinking. The radiator is quite small and floats within the width of the wall. I wanna make a shelf that will allow us to go over top of the radiator and even have some hooks that hang underneath that you could put an 
umbrella or a kid's coat. Here's what I'm planning to do. I've got a piece of MDF that is three quarters of an inch thick by eight and a half inches deep. And it's the full width of the space in the foyer, which is 48 inches. So that's 48 inches by eight and a half inches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a decorative chair rail and I'm going to attach it whoops, all along the face. I've already cut it to size. Before I nail it in place, I'm going to put a bead of glue across the edge of the MDF. Now the reason I'm using MDF is I want this to be very smooth, a very smooth surface, and I will ultimately paint this the same color as the trim. Now I will set this in place on top and, oops, slippy sliding. I want the top of the chair rail to sit flush with the top of my MDF. It's a good idea to pre-drill the chair rail just because it's quite thin and I don't want it to split. So I will use a small drill bit. And now I can just nail it in place. When you're working with a chair rail like this, you want to be careful that you don't hammer in your nail too far because you don't want to bash up the trim. The next thing I need to do is use a countersink to make sure that all of the nail heads are below the surface. I know my hammering face is very attractive, but there's not much I can do about it. My next step is to put some wood filler in all of the holes, and we'll sand that off once it dries. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to put some reinforcing strips along on the underside. And I'm using strips of one by two pine. And the first one will go snug up to the back of the chair rail and that'll give it a bit of extra stability. And the other one will go along the back edge. And I'm putting these on so that we can screw both the back brackets and the hooks into these strips of wood. good idea to add a few extra nails across the face now that I've reinforced from the underside just to make sure this chair rail is firmly held in place. I'll tell you how sore my hands are getting. Now that I have my strips reinforcing the underside, I've cut a few small pieces of wood that will just fit in between those strips. And two will go over top of the radiator, and the others will be just sort of spaced out toward the end. The shelf will be resting on top of the radiator, but just to hold it securely in place, I've got a couple of brackets. Once you've given it a good sanding, it's time to paint. But before I put our trim color on, let me just show you how the hooks will be placed. I'll set them right up close to the inside of the chair rail, and then when I flip it over, you'll see that this radiator cover is certain to be a welcome addition to our entryway. The second time Christopher Columbus arrived in Guadalupe, the Carib Indians welcomed him with a pineapple. He in turn brought the succulent foreign fruit home to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. Over the years, the pineapple has become an international symbol of friendship and hospitality and has been an especially popular motif in architecture and design. Whether fashioned in wood or stone, metal or fabric, the pineapple is a beautifully sweet welcome with a warm history.
Next on Room Service, we see big changes to a couple of small spaces that say, Welcome Home. Are you ready for your tour of the front hall? Well, let me take you through what's happened since you last saw it. You've already seen the tile work, and it is intricate and beautiful, warm and welcoming. But you haven't seen the pair of bamboo gilded mirrors that I put up on either side of the door. And you also haven't seen the shelf that I made as a project. It's now installed and provides the ideal spot to hang an umbrella or a little coat or even set down your keys. We've added a little basket that goes right underneath the letter slot so that it'll catch all the mail instead of having it pile up all over the floor. Next stop is the hallway. Well, I gave you just a teaser of one panel of this wallpaper to see what it was going to look like. And I have to admit, originally I thought the paper might be a little bit on the pale side, but now that it's installed, it's just a beautiful combination, sort of like ochre and buttercream. And I love the effect as it goes all the way up to the second floor. Carpeting. I went out looking for an airy rug when I was shopping and after all of the selections I found this is the one we decided on and it has an olivey background that picks up on the color of the drapes that are at the top of the stairs and the best part of all is it has an amethyst detail, these little flowers which really seem to echo the amethyst crystals that are on both of our light fixtures in the hall and in the vestibule. And you know it's funny you live with white and you think, oh, this is as good as it can get. And then when you see color in there, it just, it makes all the difference. Our broadloom has been installed on the stairs. And again, it has a graphic pattern. We chose something that would be great for this high traffic area. Instead of wrapping it all the way through, we ended up replacing the broadloom on the uh, sort of upper level sitting area with quarter sawn oak so it matched the downstairs and this creates a really beautiful focal point when you walk in the front door and you're immediately drawn up into the sun filled sitting area on the second level it's spectacular but really my favorite thing of all has to be the powder room and talk about a dramatic transformation it's just gorgeous I, that washroom never looked so good so i'm very very pleased we started with raspberry strie wallpaper. Then we installed a Biedermeier style cabinet, which we found through an antique dealer. We ended up covering it with a crema marfil top and found the teeny weeniest little basin to act as a sink. Then we've added a pair of hand forged iron sconces, a small little cabinet, and a few special accessories. And now when this whole space comes together, there can be no doubt that every entrance into this house provides a very warm welcome. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.